This is part five of the Blender game engine uh, physics tutorial for new Blender users. So let's just take a look once more from the previous lesson. We just looked at the XOR gate. And so there's just a couple others. So AND OR and XOR. But now look at NOR. The NOR is just an inversion. NAND is an inversion. So what it is that the N is basically an AND gate. You see it says NAND. It's N and AND. So what it does, it negates the AND gate. So what we looked at on a NAND gate when you had, we'll, we'll make it a NAND gate actually. So when you had an AND gate, you said if this is true and that is true, then make that happen. But a NAND gate says if this is true and that is true, normally it would put out a 1 to make it happen, but it inverts it here. It negates the effects of the AND gate. So it would turn that into a 0. So that will actually not happen in this case. And so there may be an occasion where uh, maybe it's maybe you have a particle moving and then you want to stop it by pressing both those keys at the same time. Believe me, it, it will come up because these these are really, really powerful. You can't underestimate how powerful this is within Blender because what they've basically done for you is they've provided you the ability to essentially work like a programmer without programming because when I program I spend a lot of time programming and I'm essentially doing a lot of these same kind of conditions within my code I'm saying if this is true but this is not true or that's true then do this because that's really what computer programming is it's logic it's blocks of logic to make things work and so that's what all this is so they've just encapsulated into a little routine and simplified the daylights out of it you take an object you know you take a key you, <laughs> you connect it together and you make it do things very very powerful all right so that's what an and an and nand gate does and a nor gate just negates an or gate so you just think of if this or that and then if the result is normally true it negates the results and so it would be a zero coming out so if it was positive coming in, it would turn it into a, a negative coming out. All right, and then then or XOR and XNOR negates uh, XOR gate. All right, so just think of it as you know negating those things as you go along. All right, so that's that'll help you know that really will help you if you want to build a game or something. It doesn't have to be a game, a simulation or something like that. Those are really, really powerful. And then we'll uh, get further into all these other things, the sensors. There's all kinds of sensors. Look, joystick sensors, right? Keyboard sensors, mouse sensors, so you can pick up the mouse and do things with the mouse. Feed it through your gates or your controllers, essentially. And then do something with it as you go. And just by experimenting with what you know about this right now, you can build some pretty remarkable things within Blender. So, but let's go s take a look at something else just for the moment. Um, normally, the scene, you know, when you look at computer games done in Blender or something else, you, you know, they usually have lights and textures and things like that. And so that's why it's really important to be in texture mode when you work within the game engine. Because already, just even like that little bit, you can see there's a little bit of a shading. Because that's usually you're creating these real-time environments and so in order to do that you really want nice lights so one of the tough things if you haven't seen my other tutorials I add a light to the scene shift a I add a spot lamp because spot lamps are really cool I'm going to show you if you're not familiar with this I'm going to press RR and then I can rotate it all kinds of angles right well it's not really doing much to the scene but that's because typically what you want is your lighting set up differently so you have to come over here to the render button and I, I emphasize this many times because it's that important and you want to set up these type of shaders the GLSL shaders like this so OpenGL says notice it says right here OpenGL shading language shaders OpenGL is a programming library that I've been using for decades <laughs> and what it does it, it provides the lighting associated with the light but it also has shadows now when you get into if you're using 2.64 you can actually do shadows with uh, another light as well the spotlight though from early versions is the only thing that would provide you shadows so let's look let's see if we can actually find the shadow see there down there see there's a shadow for the cube right there like that all right so but that actually adds nicer lighting to a scene that's a little bit dark on this side so you know in the 
uh, photography world, let me move this here. Let me see, let me move my cursor to the object. Cursor to selected. Like that, where's my cursor? Oh, I turned it off. All right, so I'll move this over here like this. So, you know, when you're doing a photography setup, sometimes you just set up two different lights, one here, and I'll copy that, Shift D, press Y, move it over here, and then I'll just rotate that on Z. Yikes. So he's kind of in the scene like that. And then if you look at the cube, now it has lighting on this side of the cube. So you don't have a dark shadow on that side of the cube. All right. And then, so then you have better lighting in your scene. So working in texture mode and GLSL is really important to have set. And then you can do texture maps and things of that nature. So let's see if this thing still works. Yep, they're still working away. So remember this was uh, this was the rigid body and don't forget about your radius. You need to control that and then in another lesson we'll address the collision bounds because by default it's just using its default collision boundaries but you can set up others down here like this depending on the type of objects that you have and some of these can take longer so collision detection is uh, that's like a subject all in and of itself right but you don't have to worry too much about that and all right well that's it for this lesson and I'll see you in the next lesson